Every single click video is where I show you 99.9% .9 of the clicks in Hearts of Iron 4. It's kind of like an unedited let's play, but it's still kind of edited. I remove all the silence so you can see a nice long three hour let's play squeezed down to maybe an hour, maybe two hours if you're lucky. And today, the community has voted for the Soviet Union. I did it till yesterday. Check out that video if you've not already seen it. It is a spicy one. The Soviet Union. Lots of fancy tricks can be done with the Soviets. And that is who we're going to be playing as today. Do not forget, these videos are very long. And I don't expect you guys to sit through a one hour, two hour video in one session. I get that. You guys have got time. You've got lives, okay? I respect your time. I love you guys. Big love to the guys who watch my channel and subscribe and like. You are the OGs, okay? And because you've not got a lot of free time, please use the timestamps provided below this video in the description and using the chapter system. Please use them, take advantage of them. I don't wanna waste your time. Skip to the bits that are more exciting for you. If it gets boring, just skip ahead. I won't be offended, trust me. Iron Man is off historical, is on regular historical Soviet Union. Just to clear up a bit of confusion in the comments in the previous videos, I'm not mid-maxing 100%. Okay, uh, if I wanted to, I could just declare on Europe and steamroll the whole game in 1936. And that might make a fun one-off video. For me, that's not very fun. I kind of like to play historical and have the build-up because I find the build-up bit quite fun in Hoi I love making nice, ideal, min maxi divisions and not just rushing the whole world. So that's the reason why I do play like kind of historical. Historical up to about 1940, then I kind of just do my own little thing. Yeah, so the Soviet Union, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the focus street for the Soviet Union. I just don't like the purge mechanic. I don't think they're very fun. And that's the reason why I tend to avoid the Soviet Union. I kind of like the way it used to work in the olden days. It's just an event chain. It was simple, easy to understand. It was more in your control. Anyway, regardless of that, we are going to go for the historical Stalin path. Uh, but to begin with, we are going to get some heavy industry and make a few civs here, here, and here. All the areas have got 80% infrastructure to begin with grab all the divisions and we move them all to moscow spread them out a little bit because you can have supply problems trust me it's russia you can have supply issues and also convert them all to something that's not an nkvd there you go to this infantry no i should go for the horse horse yes horse yeah yeah so just be aware the only divisions you can't delete or change are the nkvd ones hence the reason why i broke those away and then reattached them on so i could convert them all so well, let's look at the production so why is the hotkey get used to using hotkeys hotkeys are for the win we don't need any tanks. Three on motorized is going to be really ideal. We'll finish off the remaining ships and we'll do the ones that will cancel the ones that are not over 50%. Okay, there's a series of six and a series of 12. And we'll finish those ones off. I'm just hitting shift to go down to unlimited and up one to just say you want the single one. So let's decide what we're going to do. Are we going to go like a ground build or are we going to integrate some air with it? I kind of want to cheese by spamming Cass. I'm not even sure how effective that strategy is anymore. I would love to do like a battlefield support style cast Soviet Union. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of fun. And of course, you want to build your industry to begin with some basic machine tools because you want the industry. Also construction to build those factories. And then we think about what do we want? So we're going to go for CAS. The bombs are important. Survivability studies are good. Also, the range is usually quite good. So we'll do with the range. And we'll have the all on to the light aircraft designer. What we might do is just make them as fighters, but then add on the bomb locks. So they're kind of fighter bombers. That way you can get the most of agility. Let's look, it says just fighters and carriers get the agility bonus. Yeah. Kind of sad, really, because I said I was going to do cast, but there really isn't a cast designer. All medium planes. No. I'm just looking through the Mayo bonuses here just to see what's most applicable. Heavy aircraft, maybe? That's like bombers. I don't care for that. So the only really one that's applicable is light aircraft designer. All right, back into the production. Once again, we're going to be making convoys for the rest of this. I think we start off with a decent amount of convoys, but we might just like make 50. Yeah, we'll make like 50. And when you stop making 50, you'll get a pop-up at the top of the screen to say make something else, and then we'll go from there. A little bit of artillery. Usually three is good. And then three into anti-air. So we're going to go for kind of more of a heavy infantry build. The rest of it will be into guns. Does that seem good? All right, five speed, off we go. Now, I don't usually show this, but if you are struggling with Hoi 4 running slow, it shouldn't be a big deal with the latest expansion. You can press the teal key and type in weather and also debug underscore smooth. Ah, 
uh, yeah, I'm mixed about these ones because obviously the weather thing can be seen as a little bit like cheating because it makes your planes a little bit stronger, but then it also can make the enemy planes a little bit stronger as well. It's a bit of mixture between both. But also simultaneously, if you've got a really, really old computer, those ones are not going to make much difference anyway. You maybe get a little bit of a speed boost in the first few years of the game, but onwards from there, it's not really going to make a big deal. Anyway, the fleet, we're going to merge them all up right there in Leningrad. If you're struggling to get them out of the Black Sea, you have to hold control and right click, and that's like the shortcut for rebase and they'll move over to there and finally the planes i'm just gonna shift left click on the air wings and then right you'll click them into moscow all right five speed double let's go and you notice the speed now is insanely fast also you've got like unlimited fuels the soviet union so just feel free to press k and uh, do unlimited exercising to gain unlimited naval xp because why have you got the ability to do that i just don't know i think that's actually kind of crazy that's possible but it's doable so do it all right let's work on our politics part of the focus tree of the soviet union the bit that i just not am a big fan of sorry i'm gonna have a little moan about that as i'm playing it because i just don't like the purge system i just think it's too random it'd be kind of no it'd be kind of cool if you had more control over it but it's just events and random people getting purged and you don't have a lot of control over it. And then you've got advisors you can select that you can never use because they're constantly locked behind the purge system. Once again, not a big fan of those mechanics. I just don't like them. No, sir, I don't like it. New ships that are deployed, just going to add them onto the existing fleet. And the fleet that we're waiting for at the moment is traveling all around the world because they came from the Pacific. All right, we're going to make a few trains too. Otherwise, we will run into issues later in the game. Wow, 275 trains? Wow, you stuff with a lot of the Soviets, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to double up on the motorized priority and see if we've got enough trucks. Yeah, we do. And we have enough trains as well. Well, there you go. No, have supply problems as the Soviet Union, eh? Should we make like big meta infantry divisions? Instead of going for like mass mo mobilization and mass assault, maybe we just do firepower as the Soviet Union just for something a little bit different. That's right. We're going to go for the center, which feels strange that Stalin is the center. Stalin is the moderate of communism. Okay, we're going to work on radio now. So work on mechanical engineering. So just heads up, radio is important because it, it's the speed that you reinforce into battle and having more reinforced rate is going to get you into the battle quicker. Therefore, delay any chance you might get pushed out of an attack or a defense. The center is done. Stalin's constitution. Once again, I feel like a lot of these focuses, there's a lot of them and it feels like they do a lot, but they don't really do a great deal. I told you guys, I'm going to be moaning throughout this entirety of this part i just i once again not a fan a big fan of the soviet focus tree it'd be kind of nice it, i mean the game needs to have roadblocks to hold back the soviet union because otherwise they can snowball and get too strong so i understand that it's just the rng okay that's i promise that will be my final moan about the focus tree okay i promise anyway army defense is what we're going to go for giving plus 10 percent defense which is also 10 percent breakthrough and it gives ticking xp we're gonna need loads of xp with what we're doing now, our army is massive. I'm not even sure how many we're going to need. It's usually six we can send to the Spanish Civil War. So we'll train eight, shall we? And then exercise those to level three. Basically, ones we're grooming for the Spanish Civil War. And we'll prioritize those in the theater so they get the equipment first. All right, dispersed industry is the get-to, go-go. Be aware, you don't actually need reinforce rate as much if you start as a mass assault nation like the Soviet Union because you get that plus 2% reinforce rate. So 2% is the base rate. 2% on top of that, of course, doubles the amount of reinforced chance. But then if you go for radio, you get an extra 5%. So that obviously gives you loads of reinforce. And that's why radio is such a big deal in the game because going from 2% to plus 7% is, is obviously huge. One thing to note as well, go into your repair queue and put all naval dot yards into that just to repair them up. If you wonder why my voice is a bit croaky too, I'm recovering from COVID. Yeah, I know a few comments I've read. COVID still exists? Yeah, come on guys. Open a newspaper. Look at the news. It's still a thing, okay? Come out from behind your rock, gentlemen. Come on. Stuff happens outside the internet, you know? Anyway, socialism in one country. These focuses, don't think too much about them. Just click them. Once again, they give bonuses to stability and war support. It's something you will take advantage of, so just take advantage of it. All right, then we can go for the radio instantly. Okay, the Tula Arms Plant. This one... Oh, this is just the basic guns. Okay, so we're just going to queue these up. Let's not think too much about it. Just queue them up, and there we go. Be aware... Myos that have traits that are unique to that country are these ones on the right. See them with the little feathers around them? I'm not even sure if that's the correct expression. It's something to do with like awards, isn't it? Medals. But these ones are unique. If you hover over them, it tells you what you need to unlock them before you can possibly select them. In this case, you have to merge the tank and material plants, which is something you can't do until later in the game until you're at war. Now, I know you can declare war on Japan early game and rush it. But once again, I'm playing fun. I'm going at a nice slow pace. I'm doing what I enjoy, okay? Funds over min-maxing, okay? I, trust me, guys. I read every single one of your comments. 
Then it's like, whoa, that's really weird. Dave seems to be in touch with the community really closely. No, I'm not. I'm just reading every single one of the comments. Trust me, I read them all. Every single one. Alrighty then. So we can send volunteers now. We can we, we can send six. So I'm going to send exactly six. There we go. Six boyos and also send air volunteers. Off you go. We're going to send our best bombers and we can send two of those. So once again, off you go. All right. We're going to go for partial mobilization. I'm not even sure how you get more war support early on, actually. I think it's a little bit tricky too. You kind of need to wait for world tensions to spike up. I think you used to be able to get more war support early on to get onto war economy early. But I think they took about some of the war support out of the Soviet Union to nerf them. Which just makes perfect sense in all fairness. You don't want the Soviet Union to be too big. Anyway, this is where we play the game of who gets purged and who doesn't get purged. I don't know. So if you're a historian, uh, let me know. Because I actually don't know who gets purged. I think this guy does. And also this guy does. I think the way it works is if, if they're really good, then they get purged. Right? So we're just going to promote this guy. He might actually get purged as well. But do you know what? I don't know. That's the reason why. Another one of the reasons why I think this... Uh, Focus tree is it's just slightly annoying because once again, you just don't know. Maybe it'd have a little icon next to it that said that maybe sides with Stalin, close friend of Stalin or something like that. And that would let me know that they're potentially going to be a Stalin, Stalin's ally. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe I don't know. I promise that was the last moan. I guess I lied. Anyway, we're going to push in now in the Spanish Civil War and grind some XP. Loads of XP. And we can also go for bold attack early on. Early the get you the better. That way we're going to get lots of XP. Also, we can also go for naval reform too, giving lots of naval XP. Why are we going to take advantage of naval XP? Well, we're not, but we're just going to go for it anyway because we've got unlimited fuel because we're the Soviet Union. Secure the administration doing things. Oh, that's a good thing, actually. Secure the administration, reduce the cost for changes in econ law. So it would be min max if you went for that first, then went for the partial mode. Just to save a little bit of political power. I feel like the big nerf for the Soviet Union would be to reduce their political power. Because if they weren't able to hire their advisors like France, then it really would nerf them early game. Oh, that's just a thought. Okay, what we're going to do is something a little bit strange. Oh, actually, we don't need to. No, we don't need to. What I was going to do is change my cavalry to something else. So therefore, this division was the only one that was in uh, in Spain. So we're going to up this now. And this will get them a bit more artillery. And hopefully, it'll be in a position to do a lot more damage. Adding soft attack in the Spanish Civil War is just so big. Shuffle around the back here. And then get this one division that we're going to encircle. There is a chance that we're blocked off and we can't actually get reinforcements. And do you know how you fix that? It's sad to say this, but you save the game and then you reload it. There's some weird bug that when you send volunteers to Republicans in the Spanish Civil War... You don't receive any new equipment or deliveries unless you reload the game. Bit of bug that's been around since donkey's years. And there you go. Now we're going to actually get the delivery of the artillery. But well, once we're not actually in battle anyway. Okay, just going to spread the boys out now. Just uh, shift right clicking. Push further forward. Once again, doing more soft attack damage. I think we probably could make the division a bit bigger again. Yeah, we can. In that case, I'm just going to hold positions for a little while. Hold. Hold alt to shimmy the front lines over. Maneuver them around. Then we're getting planning bonus. And also, we're waiting for the artillery to be delivered. Now we've got uh, Dispersed Industry 1. We've got more building slots. And we can build in the areas that have got the higher level of, of infrastructure. And that way, it just saves you a bit more time. Because uh, you're building in areas that have the higher infrastructure levels. And the ones that are about to finish, you might as well just finish them. So just stick those to the top. Always a good idea to go for this one early. Because it gives you ticking air experience. The earlier you get it, the more you benefit from it. So I'd recommend. Also, professional officer course is really good for gaining XP as well. The earlier you get it, the more you take advantage of it. There we go. We've produced 100 convoys. Do you know what? I want to make another 100. If you hold control, but shift and left click, you make 100. And then it'll start when it's done. Yeah, working on all the industry stuff. Standard start to a game of Hearts of Iron 4. Standard. Push forward, making little encirclements, just giving the advantage to the nationalists. A lot of the time early game, because you've got this modifier here of unplanned offensive, it's really difficult to make big, strong pushes on the front line. So a lot of the time, what I just recommend is making small ones and make it in circumference just to reduce the amount of divisions that the other side has. So they're more likely to fall into positions where they have gaps in the front line like this that the Republicans have got here. All right, we can't go for this one for 175 days. Oh, in that case, we just wait because we can go for it later on. Also, we're going to go for an agency as well, just so you can get that intel advantage, which is always worthwhile. Uh, we're not going to do any political pa paranoia stuff. We'll just continue on regardless. Oh no, a German motorized division encircled F. You can see ticking up at 168, 170. And then you can just go for it immediately if you want to super min-max the focuses. There you go. Goodbye, Trotsky. Get another opportunity for encirclement here. I think we're going to go here, then here, then here. So it might be a good idea right now to start to rush machine guns and armor. Usually it's always better to rush the engines. So therefore you can make 
the most ideal fighter. The most ideal fighter in 1930s. It requires quite a lot of technology though, but it's basically two heavy machine guns here. These are only lights though. Uh, the Mark III engine. You've got a drop tanks, self-sealing fuel tanks, and then the Mayo as well. But there's quite a lot of technology before you can do that. So there you go. I'm gonna go for logistics companies. So this is a unique one for the Soviet Union. This, this machine plant offers some interesting options like production bonuses and speed bonuses, which is kind of interesting. This reduces hardness, but it reduces the production goods needed required, which I think is quite unique. Okay, so I'm in a position here where the supply is really bad. So what I'd like to do is move to somewhere like here, which is not only an not an unplanned offensive, but also has a more supply depots. So it just gives us more breathing space. The anarchists are here, but they're really small. Do I just finish them off now? Yeah, let's do it. Get more upgrades because you need at least four or five upgrades to get an extra spy slot. So just usually get that out of the way nice and quick. And they'll put a spy into Germany. Why not? Okay, back home, we're going to disband some of our bombers. The reason we're doing that, they allow you to reinforce into this army. There you go. See, they reinforce immediately. So therefore, we're using the maximum amount of bombers we can to do the most amount of damage. And there's gaps in the front line here. This is the weakest anarchist I've ever actually seen. All right, next up, the workers' dictatorship, which uh, oh, actually improves the surrender limit. Hence the reason why it takes the Soviet Union so much land to lose before they surrender. I also thought it'd be a cool concept to let the Soviet Union never surrender and just let you take every single province before they capitulate. But I imagine that would be a very frustrating mechanic for the player. Maybe that'd be good alternative history path. Who knows? More artillery? Yeah, why not? You probably think this is probably a little bit overkill. And to be fair, it actually is. However, it just gives so much soft attack. It's just really worth it in the long run. All right, Dispersed Industry 2 is done. You know what you do then? Queue up all the 80% construction bonuses. Same again. Ship the ones at the top that have been, the mass majority have been produced. You get these events all the time. Now, if you're looking to look after your, maybe your Navy or your Air Force, just be careful what you click here. You only fully get rid of this when you get rid of Stalin's paranoia, but always click the top one unless you don't want to get the big negative modifier. I believe when you get down to here, the cult of personality, you get rid of his uh, paranoia. And then at that point, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, this is we're not going anywhere here. I thought we were doing lots of firepower here, but clearly we're not. So we're just going to go back here where there's no unplanned offensive. And therefore, we can just steamroll around the south of Spain. Control B, by the way, is your hotkey for railroad. You see that? You can zip around the country at lightning speed. Zoom, zoom, zoom. So logistics company, usually a good idea too, to reduce overall supply. It's only 10% for the first one. The first one is actually probably one of the weakest, but then after that, they get some big buffs. All right, I'm gonna put you guys on aggressive and off you go. I think they're probably gonna chew through these divisions now because this is, oh, well, actually this is a an unplanned offensive, but this one isn't. I always think this, this system is a little bit strange. It kind of be nice if it was more visible on the map what is an unplanned offensive and what isn't. You can actually see it here. This is this thick black line here. It's indicating that this area to the north is, is unplanned, but this one is planned, and this one to the south is not. All right, we're gonna start rushing stuff now. So I wanna rush engines, and I also want to rush machine guns. The gold reserves! Yoink! My gold now. Got 70 days for the next focus, so we will work on the army. So at the start of the game, if you've not noticed, the national spirits give you big negative modifiers to your army, air force, and navy. Very similar to Italy, to be honest with you. And you can get rid of it slowly over time just by uh, going for national focuses. And see, look how quick we're breaking through here because there's no unplanned offensive here. So we're just chewing through this front line. And there we go. That's a nice juicy encirclement. Go here and you go here. Encircled and encircled. I always think this is kind of funny. The Cossack army. Nice. Overall, we're going to go for this one now because it increases your organization. Well, it doesn't increase it. It just balances it out from the negative one you've got to begin with yeah you've got minus 15 organization brings you down to minus 10. once again just queuing up all of these once again this is just muscle memory now i feel like the game should even remember what you click on regularly but it doesn't the xp on these guys and they're so high soft attack they just basically chew through everything adaptable don't mind if i do georgie you are a legend an infantry expert for the field marshal even though that field marshal may actually get purged not confirmed but maybe confirmed who knows we'll see also, this one is good. Centralized control gives you an additional bonus of range because it gives you more efficiency, air efficiency. Disloyalty, the NKBD, amazing. All right then, move all the way back to here and this will be done in 10 days. So we'll wait 10 days and we'll do for that focus. Do funky things now and like just snake across the country. But be aware if you do get encircled here, it will be quite painful because if it's another unplanned offensive, it's gonna be very difficult to break out. I think what I wanna do is just move you guys here and then continue the assault from this point. 
I feel like I also want to rush Disperse. No, it's too far ahead. So we're going to work on just basic stuff now. Should have gone for this earlier because this gives 10% soft attack. All right, you can see the attacks I'm planning here. Try to push southwards to go make an encirclement. It's going to be difficult because it's unplanned defensive. And then also pushing through the center as well. But then this is also an unplanned defensive. So you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Hey, an encirclement. Can we get it? Actually, no, they pushed us out. No, oh, they pushed them out again and again. And an encirclement. You just take out like three or four different divisions by the nationalists. You give a massive advantage to the Republicans. It doesn't look like they're losing right now. And sometimes you can't do a lot about it, but it is what it is. Hey, just keep the push up. Keep up the effort. I believe in you. You can do it. I think the best strategy here is going to be to push into here because this is, once again, a planned offensive. Oh, infantry expert. Don't mind if I do. Oh, there's a gap here. Let me go around the gap. I feel like the ultimate micro training is just this, the Spanish Civil War. You've got like so many opportunities to kind of uh, test out your micro abilities. And to be fair, it's just totally okay if you lose the Spanish Civil War. That's all right. The military conspiracy next. As you can see now, as we plow through this area now, it's like there's very little resistance. Go, go, go. I feel like I want to push further north as well. So you can see the black line here. So what I can just basically do is go around it and not go into any other areas. And that way we could just quite easily sail through this region all right the purge has happened and we didn't lose our field marshal or our general so we have selected very wisely so what i'd recommend now is go for the focus that gives stability because your stability is absolute rubbish and giving more stability is going to give you more production so there's a bunch of ones here like this one gives stability i think there's a stability button here there you go this one this one yeah they're the two you want to go for initially but you can also go for this one too but it's quite far away that one okay so again this is the front line we're going to go around the area that's the planned offensive and then just boosh because the supply is absolutely dreadful i don't think the supply lines are connected or it might be a bug. It might be a bug. Oh, this one is perfect. Okay, now we found a new contender. So this state here is not connected. So we can make a juicy, mighty fine encirclement here. So that's what we're going to go for. Slide around the back. And the AI is doing funky things where it feels like it's already won. The AI only seems to do this when it thinks it's already won. This is the we've already won strategy and we don't really care anymore strap. Once again, more snaking as well. Maybe it's a desperation thing. Maybe they don't think they've won. Maybe they think they've lost. Ooh, it's an admission of defeat. You mash H as well. It will eventually stop the order that you're going on. So you can redirect your attack to a different location. All right, need to make civvies again. And what I usually just do is make civs around the outside of Moscow. Once you've filled up all the 80% infrastructure regions. Two more divisions. Got them. Once again, trying to do sneaky shenanigans here and get around the back of me. How about I'll get around the back of you, bruv? And that's another division. Someone got accused of treason. Oh, I don't care because I have not a lot of control about that. In the, the day, the way I see it is the way the paranoia system works is if you do anything to prevent someone getting purged, you just end up creating more paranoia, which eventually causes someone else to get purged. So my advice is if you ever get the option to reduce paranoia, always take it. Don't usually do this, but I've gone for a cryptology department. Don't normally do it, but I decided I'd do it this one game just to see if I can get the bonuses you can get from the cryptology department. Usually they're not very good, so I don't usually bother. But in this case, I did. So at one time where I've given it one go. I put everyone to position and build planning bonus We're using the staff office plan and gain at least 41% attack bonus, which is definitely worth. And then at the same time, the AI is creeping behind me. Honestly, it just looks like every time I attack into an area, I'm just better off attacking into areas that don't have planned offensives. Because right now they're just pushing into me once again. Maybe I should lend lease them a few guns. Oh, we can't. They've changed the way lend lease works now. So you can't lend lease the Spanish Civil War anymore. Why? I don't know. So once again, turn around, start counterattacking into the regions that have got planned offensives. And as you can see, as I'm pushing, I'm just doing absolutely incredible damage. Can I send more volunteers? No, I can't. I said less volunteers than when I began with. Okay, the light plane Mayo is important because going for production early on is good, which is this left side. But then also stacking agility is good too. So just go for the right ones and then directly through the center, which gives max speed, agility and range. All ones that are super spicy would definitely recommend. Would you like to invest into Turkey's portfolio? For the last time, no! No matter where I attack, I get counterattacked in every location. So I have to keep turning around and pushing in both directions. Now, if you're probably a micro wizard, you're a dankest micro wizard, you probably could manage this, but I kind of like using battle plans. Listen, I play the game what I enjoy, okay? And what I find the most fun. And this is the most fun for me. This becomes an issue now because they're disconnecting my railways. Okay, next focus. We're going to go for the new Soviet woman, which gives 10% stability. We're also going to go for working conditions, which gives 10% stability. That's right, there's a pattern. And it does actually look like we're actually losing this because once again, it becomes this micro war because the front lines are so open. Did I ever tell you I didn't like the Spanish Civil War either? <laughs> there's a pattern forming, guys. Dave's just listing his 
list of things he doesn't like. And the list is, quite frankly, massive. Oh, right. German tank division. And we're struggling to break it. And the Spanish Civil War is over. Luckily, we didn't lose any divisions, though. Because now they've been ejected out of the country and they're just going to arrive back. Surprisingly, the nationalists just let me leave. That's nice of them, isn't it? The new Soviet woman. And then we can start finishing off. These ones, the Block of Rights and the Trotskyists. And there we go. The heroes of the Spanish Civil War have arrived back and uh, surprisingly intact. Once again, if you want to micro it out and really go for it, what go for it. But the problem is, is I could never close this pocket in the south. So therefore, the amount of divisions could never hold the full front lines. Then there were gaps. So that's why the AI always takes advantage of the gaps. And because I wasn't individually micro, micro versus the AI, I couldn't never beat them when it come down to the micro. Well, I mean, I could beat them if I slowed the game down. But I'll enjoy playing the game fast. Once again, I say this every game. I enjoy playing fast. I enjoy using battle plans. They're not, they're not the most optimal ways of playing. But once again, you play what you enjoy. I'm all about maximizing your fun. And if that's the way you enjoy playing the game, please, please just play the way you enjoy. All right, so we can make the big division now. And this is kind of what it's going to be. I'm going to be paratroopers. One, two, three. We can have AA in there and recon too. This is going to require a ridiculous amount of artillery. All right, so I've sorted them all now into five armies. What I want to do is make sure this division stands out. So I'm going to give it a different icon. And then select the field marshal. Pop all the generals underneath them. Apart from this spare army, actually, that's going to stay in Moscow. And all the other ones are going to be converted. Shift click all of those. Well, I can't actually do that. So I have to split that off. Select the field marshal. Change them all to the ideal division. This exceeds the special forces cap. Oh, I did actually put paratroopers on it. What was I thinking? There you go. Boom. Off you go. We're going to do a shift left click on the field marshal. So Z for the front line. And then shift left click to do the field marshal front line. And X and drag. Now we need an eye-watering amount of artillery. And if you look into logistics and hover over them, it says how long until you've meet, met the deficit. 1,000 days. Ouch. I think that's a reasonable amount, so I'll start making mills soon. Yeah, I'll start making mills from there. And then starting the generals on as well. One, two, three. And the bonus army, which will make that horses. We'll use these as reservists. We can just convert them into whatever we need at any point if we do need them. Yeah, I've noticed that this supply depot is overloaded. So I'm just going to add one railway on here and then shift those to the top by hitting shift and push them to the top. Is it shift or control? I always hold down both hotkeys. It is shift, yeah. Just start making destroyers now because we've got 200 convoys and then just keep reinforce them into the main fleet. And we've got unlimited naval XP. <laughs> it's, it's insane that you're able to do this. And we'll go for positioning too. If you never know what a naval officer call, the final one to do, just do this one because it gives positioning. Positioning is always something that gives more attack value whilst in battles. Just realized too, I can actually hire an infantry specialist, which is something you don't usually get the ability to do. Oh, and we actually lost our defense guy. Nice. We'll go for ground support. Sure. Some more supplies going up here. It's probably because it's winter, so we have to click it again. Click it again. Every time you click it, you get an extra five possible supply in that region. So we're going to build the railways anyway. These divisions are very girthy. All right. The military has a problem. We can fix the org by a very, very small amount again. So I'll do that. All right. I think we've got everything we've got now to build our plane. So basic small airframe, double machine guns, Mark II engine. No, we need the Mark III engine. And then we can add self-sealing on. And then that's it. That's the plane for now. We're not going to be able to produce any until we fix our artillery problem, though. So we'll work on that soonish. And also, military organization, which also fixes some problems. Oh, actually, the minute you go for this, you suffer from military reorganization. I can't remember how you get rid of it now. But regardless, you get to go for it now. This might be a book because I thought you had to be a major power to go for this. It's not the way I remember it. Okay, right now, the supply here is a nightmare. So what I'm going to have to do is spread them out to prevent low supply. So one of the downsides of having low supply is not only do you have a attack and defense penalties, which is brutal, you suffer from more attrition, and also you're exercising significantly lower, slower as well. Here's a little exploit time. So what we're going to do is duplicate this division and convert it all into just raw, crappy old infantry. Paratroopers, stop moving. There we go. There we go. Then what we do is we convert everything into this version that's just infantry with a little bit of support in there. Then we exercise that to level three. But now the beautiful thing about that is now we're basically going to lose very little artillery because that's the most expensive equipment as a part of the division. And that way we can just exercise them to level three, get them to where we need them to be. I should we'll disband that final army there as well. And then convert them to the more ideal division. And therefore you only need to exercise them a very small amount to get them to the most 
our ideal amount of uh, XP. I feel like I'm explaining myself really badly, but you'll see in a moment. Engine three is done. That means we can change this and add on the engine, upgrade the Mayo, and also add on armor plates. No, we don't. We add drop tanks. Okay, for 1930s, this is the best plane you can get. I don't want the one that looks like a jet, though. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to import rubber because we're going to be helping the allies, so everything will go smoothly. The Soviet Union overall is probably one of the slower starts. Probably the worst of the worst is the Americans. Just a matter of picking focuses and just waiting it out. Anyway, next fighter chassis we're going to go for. And to top it off, we'll also mark this as auto upgrade, saving us a little bit of XP that when it, uh, the new chassis becomes available and it will auto upgrade it. Welcome to another mechanic that I'm not a big fan of. Moan time. So, escalation on the border here. If you've got no troops position in this location, it will grab six of your divisions that will go across the entirety of the map to defend that location and you have no control over them this is such an awful mechanic i really hate that this exists if you've got no troops here let the japanese win immediately there you go they won immediately so now you have to send them all back reattach them back onto the army once again it's, it's a computer game i feel like you should have things that the player can control and that's just a mechanic that just, just does its own so i'm just not a big fan of it anyway mills more of those Civs, more of those. More, more, more. Okay, I didn't realize this, but to go for Stalin's call of personality, I need to do this focus first. I never even realized that. Oh, I think you have to do the posters, don't you? I forgot about those mechanics. Did I talk about how I'm a big fan of those mechanics as well? Now, you're starting to see why Feedback Game doesn't play the Soviet Union very often. So we fully decrypted the cipher of the Germans here. And this gives a passive bonus, which is this one. So air detection, interception, mission efficiency, and a bit of extra bonus decryption. The bonuses aren't really worth it, but these are the spicier bonuses. 15% breakthrough, defense bonus against country. It's pretty good, but it only lasts for 30 seconds. I stick to my guns on this one. I'm not a big fan of uh, Krypton ciphers. I don't think it's ever very really, really worth it. All right, war economy. Uh, do we do... We don't need manpower as the Soviet Union now. Uh, elusive gentleman is also pretty good. Concealment. Uh, yeah, whatever. And Stalin's cult of personality. Wow, this Stalin guy, I've heard he's pretty good. And everyone agrees, I wonder why. All right, so everyone's trained up to the level we want now. So we convert now to the ideal division. And you can see the amount of XP they lose is very small. So now if we exercise them to level three, it won't be very long. And therefore, when they're not exercising, they're not losing equipment. So therefore, it can happen very, very, very quickly. We've reached the part of the focus tree now that I think we've gotten rid of paranoia. Yeah, we have. And now, if you go for the posters, you can gain these bonuses. Which you could stack some pretty OP bonuses for Stalin, which is kind of neat. Sign the Molentrov Ribbon Drop Packs. We'll give it a shot, right? All right. We're waiting for equipment right now. But what we're going to do is drop a bunch of you guys here. Put you on high priority. And then we're going to do a little classic Winter War trickerino by going here. Okay, the posters. Here we go. High yield reduces consumer goods by 15%. That's such a good one. The way it works, though, is the more you select the same poster, the more expensive they get. So... Just FYI, it reaches a certain point with diminishing returns, so I wouldn't recommend it. All right, justify on the fins. Disappear, there's a world war situation happening. And also, we're about to max out our doctrine, so spend your XP. Same with this too, Ecru surveys. We said we we're going to go around the middle, but this only gives us agility for close air support. So we're just going to do the classic meta here by going down this path. Germany honors the pact. So now we've got a lot more land. Be aware though. You might need to extend the railways. So you can see the silver ones here are maxed out, where the kind of brownish color ones are the lower levels. So level five silver, everything less than that, kind of the brown color. So be aware that when you put troops on this front line, there's a high chance they might have supply problems. So Trotsky is in Mexico. So what you can do is send your spies to Mexico and then build an operation in Mexico to raid Trotsky's villa or do a subtle assassination. I believe raiding him has a very low chance of success. However, it only takes 60 days. However, the subtle assassination takes 270 days. However, it has a significantly higher chance of succeeding and it will get rid of this one, Trotsky plot. And we'll gain more political power and stability, even though we're pretty much near max anyway. Focus tree feels like it gives you maybe a little bit too much. So once you've gotten rid of paranoia, you can click on this and this will get rid of all the negative modifiers you've stacked for all the events that have accumulated over time. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Finland, can you stand up to my might? Add on the planes, close air support, off you go. Also, we just got the new chassis for our plane too. So now we can add on bomb locks and also add on extra armor. No, can't take off. Too heavy. Uh, in that case, we're just going to go with the machine guns. No, still exceeds weight. So we put on a very small machine gun, maybe. Even smaller. Even smaller. There we go. 
So it was originally we're going to go for fire bombers. Turns out that we've not gone for that one at all. All right. So how strong are the Finns in Arms Against Tyranny? We're about to find out. Can they withstand my 30 width monster division? And it looks like they're getting demolished. Start justifying on Baltics as well. Super historical Soviet Union. You can also select more posters as well. This one gives ticking war support. Yeah, why not? So you notice I didn't put any of my troops in the North North. I didn't feel like it was uh, worthwhile because the supplies are really bad. We're just going to lose too much equipment. So I'll just let the Finns just wrap around me for now. The Finns would like to surrender. Not a chance, bruv. There we go. Wrap around you. And I'm just going to beeline to the victory points now. Finns strong now? Mm, not really. Now we're just going to make loads of mills, but make sure you place them more ideal locations. Locations which have higher level of infrastructure. Pop goes the Finland. Steal the Navy? Feels very cheeky, but I'll do it. Okay, I actually expected them to accept that ultimatum, but they've not. They've just decided to go to war with me. Fair enough, Estonia. Fair enough. All right, subtle assassination. It's risky. Off you go, lad. And just chain up the, uh, the justifications. One after another. Next. Just going to right click on the capital. I think we should be able to steamroll them. Oh, actually putting up a fight in Riga. No, no more. Up. And one more. The final one. Once again, this doesn't require any micro or effort. The division's so fat, they just steamroll them. All right. I think we're about to make a big field marshal front line now. Go here. And all the other boys can add on to the front line. And we're making more mills. So just heads up. There is going to be a certain point where you're importing too many resources to keep the economy going so in that case you have to make more sieves so that's the balance between sieves and mills you make mills they eat more resources you need the sieves to import the goods from other countries until you reach this equilibrium where you either run out of resources or you've run out of sieves whatever comes first okay can we make another army yes we can now we're really pumping out the planes really smashing them out trading with vichy france nothing good can come of this okay as you can see right now supply bottlenecks so fix those immediately so we're gonna need extra armies now which we are training one of them is gonna go on to romania and then i don't think we need another army for this front line but we'll just put a few divisions here maybe not even 12 to be honest maybe just even we'll say eight yeah eight divisions here so front line general front line uh, fallback line and then a field marshal front line on this front line front line front line all the front lines okay more divisions but this time we're going to push them all the way to 30 so these are going to be kind of like reservists that we can fill out if we do lose divisions on the front line which is probably with the circumstance probably likely also building a supply depot here and adding a railway to it once again i'm planning to hold these locations i don't really want to pull back i guess i might build a layer of forts here just around this location just to give it a little bit more girth i'm not so i've not decided yet anyway i've just realized we've maxed out our doctrines xp I always say your doctors we maxed out the xp for the doctrines what do we do do we do something different yeah why not let's do something different we're gonna go for dispersed support which gives cooperation now as well as extra soft attack for line artillery okay so if you want to deploy planes really quickly you click on this one see this quick deploy click the fighter and if you hold shift or control key you can deploy multiple multiple air wings practically instantly there you go and then we can exercise them level three by holding shift and left clicking on train pilots that means they'll get to level three and then they'll stop patriarch of all of russia giving stability and uh, goodness so at this point we work on industry and our industry is pretty much maxed out at the minute due to me min maxing the sieves and the mills what you need to really heavily focus on is fixing your armed forces and fixing your air force but you can't do that until you actually go to war against a major power which in this case is going to be germany well, actually you can fix the air force a little bit here okay we can actually fix the air force i was actually wrong it's this one though lessons of war and desperate measures you can't do that until you're at war with a major power and again more planes shift left click exercise to level three the way things are looking at the minute i don't think they're going to be able to break us i think we're going to hold yeah i'm pretty certain we're going to hold i might build some forts i might not i don't know i've not decided yet Let's fix the Air Force. Trotsky has been assassinated and we no longer have the Trotsky plot, meaning we've got full stability, even though we had full stability before. Just the focus tree gives you lots of stability. Now we've got even more stability. Foster flying clubs, which looks like it's giving bonuses, but it's actually not. It's just getting rid of the negatives that I'm already experiencing. I wish the game would have been more clear with that. Like it's saying to you, well, you're not actually gaining these bonuses. You're just mitigating the existing penalties you've got. I don't know. I thought that'd be really easy to explain. But sometimes the tool tips are kind of like, oh, there's a lot going on. As with every map game, I suppose you always like, need to dig deep into the actual tool tips to actually know fully what's actually going on. All right, so we've got max spy network here. We've fully decrypted them. Once again, there's a part of me that wants to build forts. 
Do you know what I am going to do? Level three forts are the most cost effective. I think four sometimes could be okay too. I just want to cover the south area. And there we go. I feel like we've gone all this way. Might as well just finish the whole thing, right? Yeah. So keep an eye on the upgrades. So every time you see one of the planes, you always want to take advantage of it. Because overall, you want to be able to do as much damage as you can with your planes with the max amount of agility. So upgrading those miles is going to be super important. What other ones we've got? Women in aviation, which once again gets rid completely of all the penalties for just the Air Force, I think. Wow, the penalties are so big. Women in our Air Force. What a great idea. Yep, it's going to be level three forts all the way. I don't think they're going to be able to break us now. If they do break us, I'm going to be in a really bad predicament. So, hey, this is going to be fun, isn't it? So if you want to do the kind of the meta of this, a lot of the time they do the Stalin line, which is usually something like this. You follow around the rivers and hide behind the river lines and add forts. But that's the cowardly way. I don't want to do that. I suppose people get worried about this pocket here and getting encircled. But in this case, I'm building forts there, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. There is a well-known bug that sometimes Germany just doesn't justify on you because it thinks you could never potentially win. Can we cancel that on aggression pack? Are you going to try and declare war on them is then? I don't know what focus they're doing. Even though I've got max decryption, I don't know what focus they're doing. Need 70% and we're at just 2% away. So what if I do if I infiltrate their civilian economy? I'll do that now. I'm going to go for this one. Initiate the pilot training program. So you can either mass produce planes with big penalties or go for this one that gives the biggest bonus to the pilots. I guess we'll quality over quantity. We've got 3k fighters now. We're in a position now where we're producing so many. I don't think we're going to need more. Now, it's always good to have more. But in this case, the upgrade button becomes a little bit more attractive and i might do disband one of the air wings and then the upgrades become a possibility so i think what's happening is a lot of the planes we've got are kind of so out of date models we don't even have the ability to upgrade them oh no we are upgrading them now this is confusing it took me ages to get my head around this so what's happening is the existing air wings are having planes taken out of the stockpile upgraded and converted to the latest model then sent back into the air wings so this number never goes up any higher it's because we're constantly trading back and forth from the stockpile to the existing air wings but this number is not the one you want to look at it's this one so 2,000 planes that currently are fielded are out of date and this is the number you want to be looking at you see this number going down here we get to upgrade our anti-air too there's also a small upgrade for the artillery as well more soft attack you can't argue with that expand the aviation institute and we have a boyo justifying in us i wonder who it could be okay something that i've overlooked and good job i'm not going to forget about is i'm going to put you guys here i'm also going to convoy raid in the baltic and i'm not going to forget about this northern front line northern norway all right just a few boys on this front line yeah there's bad supply here they've also got bad supply too i'll build a supply depot just in case Realize these railways aren't connected as well, so I'll connect them up. And I'm just going to build mills anyway now because it doesn't even matter. Late game, you become so OP with all the focus tree bonuses that you get. Germany has declared war on me and they're initially pushing. Okay, send in the boys. Close air support. Boom, boom, boom. Here come the planes. And initially it looks like they're actually gaining a little bit ground on me. And okay, here they come the planes. Here they come. So I was so excited to see this. So... My state-of-the-art planes here are doing the damage they need to. The trades are fantastic. Three losses for me, 31 losses for them. So they're getting dominated. Yep, they ain't breaking this front line. This is, I think, rock solid. Ooh, if you look on this bow here, though, it looks look favorably to the Germans, though. They're suffering from low supply and experience. You've had lots of time to plan for this, Mr. H. Why aren't you ready? And it looks like they have broke me one point as well. And then I just instantly push, kick them back. Back and forth, back and forth. Be aware that they're going to be more weight than you. They're going to have better equipment than you because of the technology disadvantages you've had to persevere with. And with that as well, I'm reinforcing into this front line because I don't want them to actually take this one tower. But they're taking another one in the north anyway. And they're taking one in the south too. So we're going to have to consolidate the front line. Delete all the front lines. Zed, Field Marshal, hold shift, left click. There we go. And everyone can get into position now. This will cause them to wiggle around on the front line just a little bit. And it might cause a few issues to begin with. But we'll see how it goes. United States has joined the Allies. Oh, this is kind of fun. I thought I expected to kind of hold out really well. But by the looks of things, we're actually doing okay. So organized retreats, they're really difficult to do. As you can see, they're breaking me instantly. And I'm going to have to pull out of this area because we're not winning here. So we select the armies and then right click them out. And you can see they are, they are retreating. But they kind of like bulk up like this. And this is like areas that is like prime real estate to get encircled. So just be aware. Pull out. Keep getting out. 
Get out, get out, get out. If you want them to maneuver around, you can control B and just get them on the front line. Because that's what's going to happen is some of the front lines here are like really, really thick. But these ones around here are maybe thinner. I mean, the divisions to spread out. Also, then control B and they'll wiggle around the front line to get where they need to be. But right now, we're on top of the supply situation. We've got the latest planes. Miles upgraded the agility once again. You can never get enough agility, right? And the air war is in our favor. They've got so much cast, though. Ooh, so many cast. So what's probably going to happen is they're initially pushing us back because the bombing damage is just horrendous. And eventually, they'll start to run out of planes. And then they'll be in a really bad spot. Ooh, they've actually managed to encircle us here. Man, the power of the Germans, eh? And if we try and counterattack into them, is it going to make any difference? It doesn't look like it is. Well, this is really fun. This is awesome. I expected to just hold the front line and just be a massive brick wall against the axes. But by the looks of things here, we're actually counterattacking and they're actually putting up a fire, which is awesome. And they've actually managed to break them here. And that means might be able to help these divisions on the front line the constant back and forth here is insane and we did actually lose a few divisions here and that's why we made reserves so the guys can just reinforce back into the front line so the front lines can be still rock solid it's almost like the soviet union knew that this attack was actually going to happen okay dropping the spies in again here 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 and here boom this will give us an intel advantage and it also reduces the amount of planning bonus damage they can do against us too probably we've got max planning because we didn't have spies positioned here due to the fact that some of them got captured planning bonus 42 percent that's huge and that explains why they're doing so much damage if i had the spies in place just before they declared, I think we would have been able to hold them. But sadly, we didn't because the spies got all captured. Welcome to RNG in Hearts of Iron 4. Just changing our supply around a little bit here just to reconfigure it. Looks like we're going to have to use the reserves here because they're pushing really strong against the Finns in the north here. Which I didn't expect them to do, but it's happening. Okay, the air war is heating up and we are exchanging massively. So, what we need to do now, we could do this one, range and agility. I'll merge the plants. I think we'll do this one first, actually. Oh, there's so many good bonuses here. No, actually, the biggest bonus we need to focus on is our, our own armed forces. Desperate measures is what we need. And that allows us to fix the internal issues with our armed forces. I realize we don't have a field marshal assigned. I cannot believe it. I see the icon now, with the field marshal not assigned. And I just presume it's that bug again. But we didn't actually have a field marshal. Whoops. Okay, things are slowing down now. I think we've gotten the advantage. And look at the trades. The fighters are getting obliterated. The cast are struggling to do their bombings. Once again, slowly and truly getting more and more and more control. And also, our navy got obliterated in the Baltic too. you think with all the doctrines, we'd have an advantage. But no, Germans strong. Little tip as well. If you want to select just all your navies, select one of them. Then shift and drag a box and it'll only pick your navies. And then we can mass repair the ones we've got. Desperate measures has been done. And now we can do lessons of war. Oh no, you have to wait a certain amount of time for desperate measures to complete. This one's pretty spicy. Adaptable army reduces terrain penalties by 5%. Yeah, we'll do that. Ah, silence on the front. Nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Shots are fired again. Shots fired. And also, we can do more doctrines as well. Yep, do the land and do the air force. F3, keep an eye on the front line. Click on the air bow and you can see the ratios here massively in our favor. And if you hover over, you can see where you've got the advantage. We've got more air attack. We've got more agility. We've got more overall speed. So, of course, that's the reason why the trades are going in my favor. If you hovered over this and they said that they had more speed or more agility, that's something to work on. So, therefore, you can try and modify your plane to try and get that advantage back. It's difficult when you're already in battle, though, because uh, the advantage is probably already lost at that point. I just realized, too, there's an opportunity for encirclement. Do I take this? Yeah, I'm going to take it. There's so many divisions on this front line, but the supply is horrendous. AI, what are you doing? So you do reach a point where you've maxed your doctrines out and it kind of becomes pointless to hold on to this one. With the advantage lost on this one, you're better off going for this one. Ace effectiveness plus 50%. As you can see, we have quite a lot of aces. Sometimes you generate aces, but they don't get assigned. So feel free to assign them. Give speed bonus, agility bonus. It's, it's just necessarily a win all around. And it gives you that extra advantage when it comes down to air battles. As you can see, we're getting more an advantage of the ratios are just massively in my favor right now. We're actually reaching the point where we're actually getting close to a counterattack as well. Create a few more divisions. Realize I can go for extensive conscription too. Total mobilization as well. Army regrouping. Industrial concern. Do we care about the Navy? Yes, we do, I guess. The German protective at Denmark offers us intelligence. Yeah, why not? So we're reaching that point I talked about earlier where we're running out of resources. Oh, no, I don't think we're at that point yet. Just looked like aluminium was a bit of a struggle, that's all. So keep an eye on the front lines too. You can see there's a bottleneck here. So try and fix it. Work on the railways. Also, there's a post you can go for that reduces supply. There we go. There it is. 10% supply reduction. 
Oh, is that just fuel? Oh, no. I thought it was supply as well. Okay, that's not as good as I thought. We'll just do the high yield one again. And one thing I have forgotten about as well is logistics companies. We've only got the level one, so we could do with upgrading that further. And the front line is holding. Oh, every push has been just completely denied. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And we're running out of planes by the looks of things. So what the cool thing to do is now when you've got a stack spy network is click on their air force and see how many planes they've got. You can see right now their main fighters they got 731 so just keep an eye on it and you'll see eventually over time that number will get whittled down lower and lower and lower so it reaches the point they've just got no fighters left so you just dominate the air and in that case we can start mixing up our planes and going for something like a fighter bomber for instance to be fair actually we we're already pretty much dominating if i am actually going to do that bomb locks this is overweight in this case i think what we can do then is get rid of a little bit of armor Yep, that's it. We'll change the icon so we know it looks a bit different. Yep, yep, yep. And then start upgrading. Ooh, this is an aggressive push forward here. So many divisions too. Pushing through the marshes of Belarus. Not going to happen. So we're convoy riding in the Baltic, which is just very annoying for them because if they're trying to move supplies over, that's just going to slow them down. Curious to see if I try and push here, like how effective this is going to be. No, it won't be. Just better to hold. Once again, the Air Force is doing most of the legwork here. And if we click on their Air Force... They've now got 450 fires. You tend to find that the fighters that take all the damage initially in the battles tend to be the best fighters, like the ones that have got high agility and maximum speed. So what you tend to find is that it becomes a slip where you slip and lose some of your best fighters, and then you replace them all with the crappy old models like these ones. And the slip eventually becomes a slide, and eventually you've run out of all of your best air force. Just logistics. I forgot about it again do it so why are we holding we've got max intel on them if i was to attack here and look at the damage we're dealing uh intel advantage plus 1.8 percent it's not a lot but that means they're not getting an intel advantage on you it's like a swinging system if they have more intel than you they'll get the attack bonus or it swings the other direction so you're not only denying them from getting intel bonus but you're also getting a little bit of an attack bonus for you as well top it off as well air superiority is absolutely massive can we just see an example of that yeah air superiority is doing their breakthrough and their uh defense by 27.5 percent that's an eye-watering amount of breakthrough also we can reduce it some more by going for this one this one this one there we go max out of doctrines you see the ratios are massively in our favor they've lost all of their main bombers too so they're in a really bad state we're exercising our fire bombers now so these have actually got uh locks on them so we can actually do some cast damage which i did say i was going to do cast damage so we eventually got there in the end to be fair i've just thought of something what if we just double bomb lock so that means the ground damage we do is just absolutely massive yeah let's do it and then upgrade all the stockpile at the same time i feel like we need a research slot where are the research slots for the soviet union it's down here there's another one down here they're really difficult to get to so a lot of the time i stick on three research slots for the entire game because i'm like just can't be bothered the ratios now are massive look at this 20 20 planes 17 planes shot down for germany 16 and none on my side well there was one ignore that one there we go 15 14 19 none on my side nice as you can see this is kind of logistics game now we stack your logistics as high as possible companies on your divisions max your railways out ideally in a perfect world i like to have organizers so i can get logistics wizard but we're working on that welcome to the supply game well this one's the supply reduction 180 days minus 10 percent that's huge in report sir intel ledger we have dropped below 300 to 400 planes. What I'm going to do is get the upgrade here for the Air Force Department because we're not getting really good concrete info from them. Oh, we've lost two spies. That's why. I wonder why we didn't have as much intel as we did before. So we're going to have to rescue them. So in these circumstances, when you're losing a load of spies and you have to send them off to do missions, you're going to lose your intel advantage, which will mean they'll have more planning bonus against you and they'll also have more intel advantage against you. So you might find yourself in a situation where you've lost your extra edge. Yeah, look, they've got the intel advantage now, plus 15%. Man, that's huge. I didn't think it was that high. Yeah, about 150 fighters again. But remember, we've got some older ones here now. So probably not as uh, fighting effective as some of my fighters. Can we deploy a bunch more? I realize we've not got our imports. Activate those once again. So we're reaching a point now where we're reaching peak aluminium. And we're reaching the point where we don't have anywhere to import it around the world because we've just reached the maximum amount. We can get more aluminium by mining in our country, but we need the excavation text for that. We are reaching a point now that we, we can do a counterattack. Just exercising all of our fighter bombers to get them in uh, fighting shape. And then we will begin the big counterattack. I always feel like the posters thing to complete the political part of the 
focus tree for the Soviet Union just feels kind of pointless because I feel like you've got everything. So it's kind of like what the difference does these ones make to my overall game? I feel like I've got 100% war support, 100% stability, more political power than I can even spend. It's like, what's my incentive to finish that part of the focus tree? I don't really feel like there is one. There we go, rescued them. Then we put them back to where they need to be. The way I always work this is I always go from the capital towards the front line. So you can see Gomfa, Berlin, Vienna, Danzig, and also then onto Warsaw, pushing in that kind of direction. And then another one on Krakow, I guess. And immediately one of the agents gets captured again. Nice. All right, the boys are ready now. So we're going to attach these onto the front line. We're going to put them on air superiority and then close air support. But close air support overrides air superiority. So that means that all the ones that are doing air superiority, just machine guns, will do it. And all the ones that can do CAS will prioritize CAS. And now we've got these boys on the front line. Look at the amount of damage I'm going to deal now. I actually want to do a bit of a crawl to the front line here and just see how well we do. Be aware that casts don't tend to be effective across the entirety of the front line. They tend to be like very small wherever they're doing their missions will have the initial impact. But look at the damage. 64, 58, 80 I saw cast damage then. As you can see, the amount of damage we're doing is pretty huge. This is always something that happens and it's always a bit, a bit misleading. What happened there is that they actually counterattack and hit me. Because what happened is my guys de and then they immediately counterattacked and pushed them back. But once again, this is in our favor eventually because they're going to run out of equipment because the cast damage here is going to be really high. Once again, a bit of a war of attrition, but that's how long-term Hoi 4 games tend to go anyway. Oh, hello, encirclement. Population, you. First one. First blood. Actually, I don't think that's the first encirclement we've ever made, actually. I think there was a few that happened in, in Spain. Oh, I can see the difference now. So now, initially... They repelled us. We de quick, pretty quickly. But now the counterattack is happening and we're doing very high damage. If you look at the logistics, keep an eye on it because you want to make sure if you go into the red, you want to fix that before it happens. As you can see really closely, as a snapshot, we're losing a lot of guns and artillery, but we have such a horrendous eye-watering stockpile. It's not something you need to worry about. We can also upgrade with our miles as well. Why not? Oh, you can see the counterattack here is eye watering oh my god the damage we're doing is insane surprisingly we never actually managed to break romania romania is still holding firm but germany is just collapsing prussia what prussia so we're gonna go down the left path land air battle because we've gone for mainly an air style build i feel good that i've gone for something different actually this is this is really cool move the spies over attack 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 poland has been liberated liberated by the soviets it's not the timeline that poland wanted and now we can finally do lessons of war, which feels silly in a way, because, I mean, if this is a lesson, we won. Looks like the lesson to me has worked quite well. Yeah, I'm tempted to do an attack in the north too. Should we give it a go? Yeah, why not? Lessons of war. Parsons. Not a big deal, because they don't occupy any of our land. And you've got the option between speeding up your doctrines and getting recovery rate, or losing recovery rate and gaining more org. You know, the fact that we're winning, I actually want to gain the recovery rate. No, actually, this push here has not worked. It doesn't matter. It's tempted to take a breather here and just pause for a moment. It helps you gain planning bonus and just recover your divisions on the front line because they're probably taking quite a few casualties. But the minute we're winning and once again, the slip has become a slide, we're still going. So just keep going. And I can see Romania has finally caved in on itself. So just heads up, this build could be way more optimal if I'd micro the planes into one specific region. Using the planes just assigned to a general is quite messy and I just really wouldn't recommend it. But I, once again, I just play how I find the most fun, all right? I'm one of those really weird people that kind of like just plays for the, my maximum enjoyment. I know that's so weird, right? I don't play for like an esports spectacle. I just do it because, hey, I find this enjoyable. This is fun for me. And the final one, glory to the Red Army. That allows us to have more special forces and doctrines are cheaper. I guess I can take advantage of that right at the end because I can make my doctrines just a little bit more cheaper. And I guess I complete the doctrine tree. Hang on a minute. No, hang on. Oh, I only need one more and I've done it. There we go. Never mind. I guess if it's a 20% reduction in doctrines, that would feel worthwhile to push at the very end. But at this point in the game, it kind of feels like I've got everything already anyway. All right. We'll just have to take a breather here. Just take a pause. Draw the front line. Get everyone into position again. Build planning bonus. I'm so tempted to exercise. Ooh, we're low on guns. Ooh, that's actually really bad. What I'm going to do is delete half of the divisions here. And that'll give us a pool of weapons. Yeah. I'm also going to do local police force, which might give us another. Yeah, it was another 10k guns. All right. In that case, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom now and filter everyone through. There we go. We need loads of guns to keep this up. 
Yeah, the lack of guns is actually hurt us. What I'm actually going to do, because I'm going to focus on winning, is go no garrison for a second, flood the guns into my front lines, and then do local police force, and just go medium priority for garrisons. Definitely don't need that many uh, planes anymore. We're really well and truly maxed out. But once again, we've reached peak resources here. Maybe we can go to limited exports, maybe? That gives us some resources back. Yeah, a little bit. Axe is trying to do a counterattack in the Balkans. Denied. Hard to know what to build at this point because you've got so many mills. And you, once again, your economy is so massive that you kind of like importing the whole world. Danish inquiring to buy old ships. Are you occupied by Germany? Here you are. Glory to the Red Army. Feels kind of strange to do this, but we're going to actually focus on our industry. Something we've neglected for the entire game. Never even did infrastructure effort who needs infrastructure right we don't need roads where we're going all right max planning bonus everyone's got their equipment back now so the bush are tearing through the heart of germany here and having to put the spies back up over and over again and uh do the operation to rescue them is a little bit tedious and close danzig we made our own little uh, german dunkirk then again have you ever seen the maps at the end of the war in like 1945 the germans actually held on to that like, areas of the baltics to the very end of the war there we go pocketed if you control right click that's the support attacks the blue arrows that means they won't all move in one spot and like create a big traffic jam of supply they'll just move forward with the ones that are doing the attack and everyone else will stay behind just like that swedish request trade military expertise for ball bearings Sure, Sweden. Berlin, gone. Once again, this northern beer, there's like a strip straight through, but this front line here has barely even moved. Bulgaria has declared war on Bulgaria. It's the commie Bulgarians. This is actually historical because this is what happened to Romania and Bulgaria as the war turned in the opposite direction and the uprising started to happen. But I don't think this is uprising is going to persevere. There's only got four divisions. This could turn around at any moment here and end this dream. The communist dream of Bulgaria. Was it a good one or a bad one? I don't know. Anyway, go aggressive, lads. Let's end this. Oh, I see what's happened now. We're struggling to break through the Sudan due to the forts. The forts to keep the Germans out. And now the forts to keep the Soviets out. Oh, finally, D-Day. And no, it was denied. The only attempt the Allies have made is to retake Africa and Sardinia. That's it. Oh, okay, never mind. No, no, they're holding on to Greece. Well, for how long? I don't know. So the process is just keeping on logistics, keep going back and forth, making sure you're taking care of your supply issues. And once again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go no garrison just for a few days. So therefore, all the garrison guns get redistributed to the front line and then go back onto local police force. This will cause a spike in, in resistance, obviously, but at least my front line armies are going to be well supplied. So they're not going to have uh, issues with uh, low strength divisions. All right, aggressive again. Organizer? No. Okay. I was hoping the uh, field marshal would have got organized to get logistics wizard because logistics wizard is mad OP. Oh, can we grab Budapest? No, we're starting to, the front line starting to get thin. This is one of the issues. This is when you've got a short front line just here, you can concentrate a lot of your firepower, but then the more you spread out, the more you run into problems. All right, send in the boys. Another wave of planes. The planes are well and truly carrying this. Romania's gone. Go, go, go. I do enjoy this part of the game, though. Mopping up is really fun for me. And Germany's gone. You guys go here, go here, and go here. So what I'm just doing here is I'm deleting front lines and just making new ones just so I don't have to micro individually the armies. And the ones that have got exclamation marks just control, left click to make them automatically move. And when they're moving, I do control and B. And you can see that they're going to railroad to the front line. Oh, adaptable field marshal. I don't mind if I do. Wow. So much equipment. So little resources. We're sucking the world's supply of resources. I think that's kind of amusing, isn't it? But then I guess that's kind of like world war though, isn't it? Like the idea that you have so much production for the war effort that it's basically consuming all the world's resources. Is that too far maybe? Okay, so we have a nation here that's floating in the middle uh, that's not in our faction. So what we can do is ask for access and that way just eliminates the issue of having to draw new front lines. Just carry them over. And also spies, I guess we can stick them all into Italy. But it's kind of pointless because they're so near late in the game right now. We could probably break Italy quicker than we can even build a spy network in them. Release the swarm. Bulgaria has capped. And every time you do cap a major power, you are going to find yourself in a situation where the front lines are going to go be a bit wonky. So remember to right click on nations and ask for access. Otherwise, the front lines are just going to go even more wonky. Italy is fractured into a civil war. Uh, transfer the territory. Going to control B once again. Get over the front line. Make sure we've got a good chunk of divisions on the main front line. Break into mainland Italy. Probably can right click onto big victory points now and just make them move automatically. I also like to click, control click over and over again to make sure everyone's attacking. And everyone is on aggressive. UK's here. Don't forget to ask for access. And easy to push around in total. 
of Italy by just sweeping through them. I do this every single video. I've done it so many times. It's like muscle memory now. I don't even care about my logistics at this point. Oh, I just realized Vichy France is Germany. Wow. You guys go here. Keep pushing. Push, push, push. Curious to see what my contribution is here. So remove all the filters. And my contribution is 77%. So practically everything in the peace conference. The final break of Italy. And with the massive amount of cast, we can break over this straight that's usually impossible to break. But with the amount of air power that we've got, it is doable. Oh, I decided to stop for some reason. Why? Is it because we need to get our navy here? No, they don't want to go over there. Okay, we have to manually tell them to do cast strikes here. Break them off, add them on to a general. Right click move. I don't mind disorganizing all my army at this point because we're so late in the game anyway. There we go. And the cast damage, F3, 12 strikes per tick. That's pretty heavy damage. And immediately break out and grab the final victory points. GG! It is done. New bug. Fresh new bug. And do you know what that new bug is? <laughs> this. Ah, communist Oslo. Yes, I'll take that. And Poland, I'll take all of that. Romania? This is going to be the biggest Warsaw Pact possible. Is it Warsaw Pact? Is that the, the communist action in the Cold War? I can't remember. Dave's got limited history knowledge. Just try and grab as much as you can and then contest everything because you've got all the points to do it anyway. And then you can start taking chunks out of other nations. Just try and take as many as you can in one go with the whole nation ones. And then the major powers are obviously going to be a bit more difficult. So that's why I'm gobbling those up now. Yep. And again, don't take Italy though because you've already got them as a puppet nation. So they'll automatically get war contribution and add points into their state. And for some reason, the AI always gives it back to Italy. I think that's pretty much it. I guess maybe overseas stuff. So if you want to see stuff that you can't see by clicking on the map, you just click on the drop downs here. So Albania, I'll take all of Albania, all of Montenegro. Once again, just keep contesting. Pass, contest, pass, contest, pass, contest. Eventually they'll run out of points because remember you had like 80% of the war score at the end. So eventually we'll get everything that you wanted anyway. These bits of Germany here. Oh, hang on. Why is this considered part of Germany? A lot of these are overseas stuff. I'm just a little bit confused here. Like why is some of this territory considered Germany? I'm actually taking chunks of France here. All right, we're going to hit confirm and exit here, and I'm going to see chaos, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, I did take bits of south of France, but it got handed back to France anyway. Oh, and they didn't do what I thought they would do. I thought they would be handed to the Italians. That's usually how it normally works, but because we're not in the same faction. But my goodness, that is a very, very Soviet-focused Europe. Wow. Well, where do you go from here? I know where you go from here. You go this, this, this... And this. Anything else I've forgotten about? Yeah, up here too. Justify. 10 days. Nice. Operation Unthinkable, which is kind of the, wasn't that also Patan's idea on the Allies' side? Well, now Stalin's got the idea now. Alsace Lorraine, boom, declare. Off you go. Just plowing through the Maginot line. Yeah, I know it's historical up to this point, but I kind of went all the way and I thought this was kind of fun and amusing, so I wanted to do it. Soviet Italy, are you going to join the war? Yes. For some reason, it's called the Japanese-American War. The fall of Paris again! What I'll do is move everyone off the Maginot and maybe ignore the Maginot, but then I'm probably going to need a few divisions on the Maginot anyway. I wonder why I wasn't doing too well on the battlefield, but it's because I didn't have any of the air wings attached. They've all become detached for some reason. I don't know why. That's strange. Unattached, detached. Anyway, just clean up the front lines. Get on the front, get where you need to be. Soviet Italy has capitulated. Oh god, we've become encircled as well. Italy was a death trap all along. Okay, I just want to cap France again. I can see that the front lines here are not really going how I would prefer. But I just want to cap France for one final time. Once again, this is just me dicking about, okay? Once again, it's this really bizarre concept, but like, I like to just have fun. I, I like to make my own little goals. I think that's the beauty of map games. I think when you make your own goals and your own personal objectives, it just becomes a way more fun experience than this kind of like min-maxing, win-win-win strategy. Once again, don't take it too seriously. I'm just having fun, all right? If someone's in the comments getting offended, I'm just here to have a good time, all right? We're not here for a long time. We're just here for a good time. France, this is where you get caps, bruv. 100%. Get Rex son. Classic closing the Maginot is a nightmare. Even when you attack the forts all the way around, they're still a nightmare to break. All right. The front lines should all be unified now. So I'm just going to delete all of them. You're going to push out. Could you guys like walk over so to connect up the, the Maginot? There we go. Then we make the super front line. Oh, it's not connected here. Go. And once again, control B. Get the front line. Go, go, go. Push, push, push. I kind of want these front lines to connect up too, so I can just make a one big front line because I'm super lazy. I was about to look at my logistics and think, God, I'm really behind on uh, equipment here. But I'm actually not. This is the issue you run into sometimes. The, the, the AI just does not put the planes where you need them to be. 
So right now we need the planes right in Western Germany, but they're all here for some reason. Why? Once again, that's the reason why it's always best to micro your armies better. Big Greece. I had this feeling that I was playing Germany. I was like, when they need to defend mainland Germany. I'm like, oh no, no, I'm the Soviet Union. Oh yeah. You're probably thinking, Dave, you messed up right now. There's way too many front lines here. This is a complete mess. I'll be honest with you. When you play like a full three hour session of Hoy, my attention span kind of dwindles a little bit. And I'm not as precise as I normally would be. But, you know, honest with you, I kind of like the way this campaign ended. I felt like I showed you guys all the meaty stuff and all the best stuff. And, uh, yeah, I ended with a bit of a bang by declaring one of the allies, which I thought was kind of fun and amusing. Guys, if you're into this kind of thing and you want to see more of this kind of content, and there are other features you want me to focus on, give me a like and a subscribe and comment below. And this just lets me know this is the kind of content you want and YouTube will feed you more of this kind of content. Hot on heart. My energy levels weren't as high recording this video as the previous days. I'm sorry about that, guys. Maybe that's maybe the problem is recording three days in a row, three sessions, big marathon ones too, is a little bit draining. But this is what we've ended up with. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this content, you might like this video that's on screen right now. Give it a click. Apart from that, boys, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you guys soon.